interpret Torah and live a Torah obedience to me in life. He must, he, Yeshua is your teacher unto righteousness. Amen. Turn your name and say unto righteousness. Unto righteousness. Now watch. He is also the same who will cause the rain. What is the Hebrew word for rain? Good. Geshem. Glad you asked. Geshem. Geshem. He will cause the Geshem to come down for you. Okay, there's a lot of implications here. Rain is a type of the Ruach HaKodesh, the set-apart spirit. When we, when we accept Yeshua, we said to be filled with his spirit, we are filled with rain. We're filled with moisture. We're filled with life. Life, dew, rain, gives birth to moisture. We'll follow we'll fill the life flow, the life-giving ebbing flow of Yeshua because he is not just a teacher of righteousness. He is a teacher that leads us, led to righteousness. What does that have to do with Shemini Yatzer? Remember we learned yesterday? Those who drink of the Hoshana Rabbah get to go into eternity, which is a time that is not a time, therefore it is eternal. How much does the Bible have to say about eternity? Very, very little. All you're going to find in the Bible, about e the scripture about eternity is Revelation 21 and Revelation 22, and it's very, very little, but it's enough to know there's no moon, there's no sun, there's no Sukkot. Why? Because Yeshua is all and in all. He is Sukkot, he is Moadim, he is sun, he is moon, and he just rains and rains and rains, and there's so much rain coming down in the latter rain because you've allowed yourself to drink of the former rain, that in the latter rain, now you are so full and overflowing, and as it is written, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. What kind of rivers? You become the life source, the river to the nations, Gog and Magog, who are subject to you in the, in the in eternity, past the millennium, so that you are out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeshua says, you will be like I am, First Yochanan 3, 2, brother, and it's not yet appear, we shall, we shall be like him, we shall see him as he is. We will be the river, the source not the recipient of that source. Amen. That's Yahweh's yeah. plan for you. Amen. Yahweh's plan for you is to take you, if you drink on the Hoshana Rabbah, he wants to take you to the Shemini Atzeret, when you will be a, a life source along with him as, as rivers come from you. What rivers? Rivers that are so abundant, half goes to the Western Sea and half goes to the Eastern Sea. We talked about that yesterday. Okay, and it's kind of all hooks into yesterday. But in that understanding, so then, then, then in the Pashat, we see the former rain as the drinking of salvation unto eternal life. What, what can we call that in Hebraic understanding? Hoshana Rabbah. Okay? The first rain is when? Hoshana Rabbah, when you, when you drink of the water of life. But now, now of course there's a lot of implications here, but I'm talking about in the Pashat. In the, now some say, well, the early rain is, uh, is October, and the latter rain is around April or Pesach. Forget about that religious nonsense. Just listen to what I'm telling. All right? All right. The latter, in, in terms of Sukkot, come on, in terms of Sukkot, the latter rain is associated with eternity, the early rain is associated with the thing that you drink of that gets you to eternity. I know all about geography, but all, I know all about the farmer's almanac, okay? Someone's going to come and say, no, Rabbi, the early rain is October and the latter rain is April. No kidding. Now, can we move on now? All right. I want to take you a little bit deeper between Remez and Sof. Tov? Tov. So that the whole Shemini Atzeret, even in the liturgy in the synagogue, in the traditional rabbinic synagogue, is associated with the word and the term Geshem, rain. So those who allow the rain of Yeshua to come upon them in the Hoshana Rabbah or drink of the waters of salvation, i.e. the person, the tov, and the blood of Yeshua, get to get the fullness poured upon them called the latter rain, which is not just your ticket into the millennium, but it is your life source in eternity when you become a life source on behalf of others. Hello? Because you're in him, he's in you, and so there's no devil, there's no sin, there's no moon, there's no, no Rosh Chodesh. You, you become the actual life source that Yeshua is, for he is the firstborn among many brethren. Hello, Hallelujah. He is the firstborn among many brothers. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. 
but, but we're just touching the surface of this. Now, so this teacher, Len righteous, to over, to righteousness. See, others can fill your head with knowledge. Are you with me? But they can't fill your head unto righteousness. Yeshua doesn't just want to fill your head with truth. He wants to lead you into truth. Because, Ani ha-chayim, Ani ha-derech, Ani ha-emet, Yochanan 14, 6. Ani ha-derech, Ani ha-chayim, Ani ha-emet. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He is truth, he is life. Baruch Hashem So, so he want, if you drink of the waters of Hoshana Rabbah, you get to be fully separated to the eighth day, which is why the rabbis say, in essence, the eighth day is a separate closing ceremony. It's not part of the, anything this world has to offer. The millennium, the Hoshana Rabbah, points to something this world has to offer. Hello? Being with Yeshua, being in the kingdom, being in Jerusalem, being born again, coming to the life source, drinking of, of eternal life. But the eighth day is said to be actually separate from everything, for even the millennium itself, the Atid Lavo, is the last thousand years of man on this earth. So Yahweh perfectly shows you that the Shemini Aseret, a final festival, a separate festival, a closing festival, is something that takes place after the close of this age, which is eternity itself, where we will be children of the resurrection. We will be like the Malachim in heaven that are neither married or they given in marriage because the children of this age. So we have the final thousand years as children of this age if we drink of the waters of Hoshana Rabbah. And then we are promoted to the what? The Shemini Atzeret, a time when there is just resurrected beings who are life sources. You know what this day is all about? It's about being a resurrected being and being a life source. A light and a life source. When you show up on Shemini Atzeret, the eighth day, you say, I'm not just putting all my eggs in the millennial basket. I'm going past the millennial. I'm going to be just like Yeshua, just like the Malachim in the resurrection, who neither marry, give in marriage, they don't need, they don't got to keep kosher. How many Malachim keep kosher? <laughs> That's what we're going to be like in the resurrection, and in eternity we're not going to be keeping kosher, because we are fully kosher, and everything that comes out of us is clean, Just uh, not just our thoughts, but our hearts and our bodies, they're all going to be purified like unto his purity, his purification. So the Shemini Atzeret is really part of the seventh day, because without Hoshana Rabbah, you don't get to Shemini Atzeret. If you refuse the goodness and the waters of eternal life and salvation, you don't get to eternity. So that Hoshana Rabbah is a requisite for Shemini Atzeret, or the eighth day. So you can't just show up on the eighth day and bypass the seventh day. And the six days are the common days from Adam unto the millennium, the first six days of Sukkot, from Adam to the millennium. The seventh day of Sukkot is a type, a foreshadow of things to come, Colossians 2.16, not things that were passed under the law, but things that are to come, so that the seventh day is a shadow, a prediction, a prophecy, an understanding of the Atid Lavon that is to come, and then comes the eternity of the eighth day, which is the number of new beginnings, new creation, Regeneration, when Yeshua said, Behold, I make all things new. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. Not just some things. Behold, I make all things new. You, your home, your family, your earth, everything. How can he make all things new? He's got to take you away from being the needy and, and dependent and make you the independent source of life. You will be part of the life giver. You in him, he in you, the father in him, and he in the father. Do you understand? So th that is eternity. But to get to eternity, you must drink of the waters of Hoshana Rabbah. So are they connected? Yes. And yet they're separate. Because once time is over, eternity commences. So they are separate. So today he speaks of a day of new beginnings. Behold, if any man is in Moshiach, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17. And so all things mean all things, which means you will be a new creation. The eighth day speaks of a time when there is no Satan. Satan is no longer bound. He's bound for a thousand years during the seventh day, but then he's released during the, he's dead during the eighth day. He'll be consumed forever in the lake of fire. Or dead as far as we are concerned. <laughs> are you with me? But, but, but I want to focus in on what Yoel said to us before. 
Go ahead and sit there quietly. I'm going to keep on teaching. Just go ahead and be quiet. See if I can. But read earlier in Yoel 2, the end of 23, the teacher of righteousness will cause. Turn to your neighbor and say he'll cause. He'll cause. Who, who's going to cause? cause. Our older righteous. brother, the teacher, or more litstaka, the teacher that brings us to righteousness, not just of righteous knowledge, but the teacher that brings us to righteousness. Yored, listen, yored lachem, he will rain down for you, geshem, or rain, more umalkosh. More umalkosh. Now, in your Bibles, it is translated what? The early and latter rain, correct? Yes. A, a, am I correct? Yes. Let me just make sure, yes? Yes. The former or the early and latter. Yes. Okay? That is not actually the literal translation. Ready? And your brother bro, your brother bro, my brother Yochanan helped me out with this one. But I took it a few steps further. You know what it says in the actual Hebrew? So we know that the first rain is... What? Where do we get the first waters from? The waters of salvation. The seventh day, Hoshana Rabbah. Where do we get the waters of the eighth day? From the same teacher of righteousness if we drink of the waters of the early rain. Yes. Hello? So the early rain can be said the initial waters of salvation, which is not an end in itself. It is the means to an end. So the waters of salvation is not the end, the desired goal. It is the means to an end. Just like Torah is not the end in itself. It is the means to an end, as it is written in Romans 10, 4, for Moshiach is the teleo of the Torah, or the goal at which the Torah shoots for. Torah keeping is not the goal. The goal is for Torah to make us like Yeshua so that we can drink of the waters of salvation through Yeshua to get us to the waters of the eighth day, which is not the first rain, rather, yea, is the latter rain. Ooh. I'm warming up now. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So Yahweh's plan for us is, yes, drink of the goodness. You're going to need my goodness in this life, and you'll do the Moadim, and you'll do the Chukim, and you'll do the Mishpatim, and I'll train you, and I'll mold you, and I'll shape you, and I'll shape you, and I'll, you'll walk by faith and not by sight. But when I pour out the Geshem, or the rain of the latter rain, you won't walk by faith, you'll walk by my power, because I will be in you, you will be in me, you will be a reflection of me. Even as I am a reflection of the Father, you will reflect me, so you won't need Rosh Chodesh, you won't need Pesach, you won't need Sukkot, you will reflect me as I, even I reflect the Father. Hallelujah. Can this make sense? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so in the in, in the limited Messianic Jewish understanding, I'm sorry if I insulted all my Messianic Jewish friends, it's like, well, let's go to Israel and pray for rain because we know the rainy season starts in September and ends in April, and so the first rain is September, the latter rain is right before Pesach. Glory to God in Yeshua's name. I mean, but see, there's something deeper here. See? see? There's something deeper here. Alright? Now, I just told you it's translated early or former and latter. Correct? The former, what is, what is Revelation, oh boy, what does Revelation 21 say? The former... Uh, come on. Shall I pass on? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Sold. Sold. The former things shall pass away. Amen. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. Behold, I beheld the new heavens and new earth. The former things. In context of Yoel 2, 23, what are the former things? Part of the former things includes the former rain. Yes, when we come into the eighth day, or eternity itself, everything associated with the former rain passes away. Ooh. Hallelujah. Everything associated with the former rain passes away. The actual Hebrew here in Yoel 2.23 reads as follows. Geshem, it gets deeper than that. Geshem more umal kosh. Now listen. In your Bibles, does it not say the former and the latter rain? Mm -hmm. Does it not say that? Yes. Guess what it says in the Hebrew. 
Geshem or rain, more umalkosh. Why? Why? Why does that? The word more sound familiar? Didn't we just read the teacher of righteousness is called more litzdaka? The teacher that brings you to righteousness. Didn't we just read that? Mm -hmm. Same word, more. What is the Hebrew word for teacher? More. more. So here it is the teacher of righteousness, not the Pope, not, 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 not the prophet Jonah. Okay? It is Yeshua himself, the teacher of righteousness, who rains down something. He rains down something. The translation says he rains down the former rain. That's not what the Hebrew says. No, the Hebrew says mor geshem more. What did we? What was Yeshua just called? The more let's stuck up. The teacher unto that will bring you not just teach you head knowledge of righteousness, but actually make you righteous. More let's stuck up. Not a, a teacher who will, who will show you how to be righteous, but a teacher who will actually take you and make you. Yeah. Turn your neighbor and say, take you and make you. Take you Turn your neighbor and say, shake you and bake you. Now shake you and bake you until he makes you righteous. <laughs> and ain't that true? Huh? So he brings you to righteousness through the blood of Yeshua, and he says the former things are passed away. Part of the former things that are going to pass away is, is it not the former rain? Yes. yes. Huh? Yes. So in the remez, we're somewhere, we're somewhere between remez and so. So if, if, the, if the word moret is used for teacher of righteousness, i.e. Messiah Yeshua, and moret is also used, listen, More is also used here for the early former rain. The word early rain, first rain, former rain is more. Which means that the early rain was the Ruach HaKodesh. For it is written, Yeshua said, when the Ruach HaKodesh comes, he will teach you all things. He will put you into remembrance of all things. He said, it is expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, yes. the more or the comforter teacher will not come because when he comes, he won't be limited in sharing knowledge with you that I am limited in by your imperfection and so forth. But he will share with you and teach you all things about me that the Father has given me yes. and bring you into remembrance of all things. So the comforter or the Ruach HaKodesh, the early rain, is the same word teacher as Yeshua, the very teacher who brings you to righteousness. Amen. So we know both the teacher and the teacher are both Yahweh. Amen. Because if Yeshua is Yahweh, the lesser Yahweh, then the Ruach HaKodesh also must be part of Yahweh because they are both called teacher or the Hebrew word more in the very same verse.